What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender Geometry Nodes video for you. So in this video I wanted to highlight a cool effect that I found on Twitter from another user that's doing amazing things with Geometry Nodes. So in this video I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, where you can find the node setup, how you can set it up, and also how to support um, the user that put this whole thing together. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this is an effect I found on Twitter last week that's been put up by a user named late as usual and i will link to this twitter feed in the notes down below but he put out this really cool video about this effect that he's created where he's basically simulating this uh, stylized ripple effect using geometry nodes inside a blender and it's kind of interesting because really all that it is is that it's taking geometry nodes and it's setting them up so that you get this ripple effect around the different objects and then you've also got a texture on this face and they're kind of being merged together. So it's a very simple, low impact effect that you can set up inside a Blender. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to learn how to use this and then kind of show you some of the things that I struggled with setting it up. But first off, make sure that you go follow late as usual for more cool stuff on Blender. In addition to that, if you are interested in supporting late as usual, if you click on this link right here, it's, it's a little roundabout, but then you click on his here link right here. He has a Gumroad page that has some different effect files that you, you can download. So if you want to support him, go in there and buy um, a couple of those or one of those just to kind of support what he's doing so that he can keep doing cool stuff like this inside of Blender. And so in addition, if you look at this post, which I'm going to link to in the notes down below, he has the nodes set up underneath. So that's really helpful because we can actually go through and look at these nodes and figure out how to set them up so that we can simulate this or replicate this ourselves. And so one thing to note is this feature is using some features that weren't released in 2.92. Specifically, there's a couple geometry nodes that aren't a part of the official release. So in order to get this to work, you're going to need to go into the experimental functions down below and download, um, I think it's the 2.93 alpha version. And so really to set this up, there's four things that you need to focus on. So you need to focus on the geometry nodes, the shader setup, the geometry vertex color setup, and then animating it. And so we'll talk through some of this. I'm not going to walk through creating all of the nodes just because that's really time consuming and you can find all of those in the Twitter post. So you're going to have to set up the nodes themselves yourself. But I'll talk you through some of the things that I struggled with. And so to start off, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a shift A and we're just going to add a plane. We're just going to make it a very simple plane and then I'm just going to scale it up a bit. So maybe to right here, then I'm going to make sure that I apply the rotation and scale to this. And so then what we want to do is we want to set up the geometry nodes that are going to be associated with this, right? So to do that, you can just click on the little wrench right here. You just want to add a geometry nodes modifier. And so that's going to give us access to the Geometry Nodes Editor. And I'm going to go ahead and create a workspace for that real quick. So I'm just going to make a new layout workspace. I'm just going to drag this down and I'm going to add the Geometry Node Editor. And so you can see how this is now currently in here. And so we're just going to add a couple nodes in here and I'm just going to do this really fast. So if you have questions about anything that I added in here, just leave a comment in the notes down below. All right, so this is the general node setup that he's using. So basically what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's subdividing your plane. So it's splitting that up so that you have more vertices in here. And then um, I'm not 100% clear on how this is working, but basically it's using the proximity of the faces of the objects in order to create a result. And this result is getting brought in here and it's getting mapped to a value of COL, which is going to align with the um, vertex colors that we set up in a minute. So we'll mess around more with this in a second, but that's generally what this node setup is going to look like. All right, so this next step is going to be really important. So this took me a little while to figure out. Um, this is why my, uh, my effect around the objects wasn't working. So you need to make sure that you've selected your plane 
and then you've gone into your vertex groups over here and you've added a vertex color option labeled col so col is going to come in here and this is going to link up to that because this is basically acting as a um, it's it's acting as like a variable and so if you don't set up this col vertex color the whole thing isn't going to work so you will get objects and you will get a texture but you won't get the kind of splashing effect around this so make sure that you go into your plane and add a vertex colors option well now we're going to go in and we're going to set up the shading of our surface so to do that i'm just going to click into the shader editor right here and so i'm just going to add a new shader right here. And so this is going to be a fairly large and complex shader. Um, and really it's got two parts to it. So it's going to have a top part, which is going to basically be what we're going to use to set up the splashes. We've got a bottom part, which sets up our water image. And so one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into Google and you're just going to want to type in Wind Waker Water texture and um, there should be some results inside of the Google image search there it was really weird because a lot of them were linked to and there wasn't any information about them so just go find a, a wind waker water texture and we're gonna use that to start off now we have this material set up in here let's go ahead and set up our shader and so I'm going to speed up this part, but I am going to leave it in here just so you can see the nodes that I'm adding. Um, you can probably see them a little bit better if you slow this down to half screen. I will leave a link in here showing you when um, you can move on to the next instruction if you don't want to see me adding the nodes in here. But in the meantime, um, I will leave this in and I'll come back with anything that's important. So note for the node that says linear light, this is actually a mix RGB node. It just doesn't say mix RGB on the top.
All right, so now we have our nodes set up. And again, I will link to the Twitter post where he shows you the nodes more in depth. So I just wanted to go through and do those really fast. And um, so the problem is now though, if we were to add a monkey, so let's do a shift A, mesh, and let's add a monkey to this object. Nothing is happening, right? And so to really figure out why nothing is happening, we need to go back and look at our geometry nodes for this object. So if you remember, we have an object in here called collection info, right? And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna reference a collection in order to set up all the proximities that are being used with the vertices in here. Well, right now, we don't have a collection for this object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go up to my scene collection, right click and click new collection. And that's just gonna be called collection two. I'm just gonna drag the Suzanne into collection two. Well now, inside of our geometry node, what we wanna do is we wanna set this up to reference collection two. Now you can see what's happening is this is setting up proximity based on this attribute color ramp and what, whatever's inside of this collection. So that means if I adjust the sliders on this proximity ramp, right? Notice how this is washed out right now. Well, we need to go in and reverse these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the black over here to the white or to the right. And then we're gonna drag the white over to the left. And then we can adjust the sizing of the shape that's being created in here. And basically what this is doing is, I think this is weighting around the object um, based on kind of a gradient around the outside. So I think that's how it's setting this up. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I believe that's correct. And so now, if we look at this, if we move this object around, this effect that we're getting around this object of the water is moving around with it. So we've got our geometry nodes that are setting up the proximity. We've got our shader that's setting up the water effect around the outside of this. And so now we need to do one more thing in order to animate this. And by the way, um, cool thing about this is anything that gets placed inside of this collection is going to have a little splash ring around the outside of it. Like notice how here I added this cube and there's no real ring around the outside. Well, if I drag this into this collection like this, and then move it around a little bit. Now we've got the water effect in here. And so let's take a look at this a little bit closer and talk about maybe some different ways that we could animate this. So we're gonna go back into our shader editor view. And really we need to look at this because we've got our two different settings in here, right? Or our two different um, areas. So the top area has everything to do with the way that these splashes are created, right? It's basically using noise to create the ring around the outside. And the rings are gonna look different depending on different things that you adjust over here. So you can adjust your thickness, your maxes, your minimums, other things like that in order to really kind of adjust that effect. So that's gonna be affected here. Um, down below, these nodes all have to do with this texture right here. So for example, if I click and drag, on some of these like the add textures in like the vector, that's going to affect where the water is at, right? So by knowing that, what we can do is we can keyframe these and you could add a driver, but I'm not super good at the drivers quite yet. So we're just gonna do this with keyframes. But let's say for example, that we wanted over the course of a timeline. So I'm just gonna drag this up so that I have the timeline in here, but let's say that we wanted this to be a value of zero at zero. Well, we would keyframe that. And then at 250, let's say we wanted this to have a value of, we'll say one, we would insert a keyframe here. So now if I animate this, that value is gonna change in here and it's gonna make it look as if your water is moving. And so we could do the same thing if we wanted to with some of the other functions in here as well. So like the vector of this add, for example, we could do that um, just kind of depending on what you wanna do. So let's say that we were to keyframe this at a value of zero, keyframe this at a value of 0.2. So I'm just gonna right click, insert keyframe. Now, if I play this, my water is just moving around. And so you can play around with these vectors in order to get these different effects. Notice how if you move these objects around, they're still getting the splash that's in here, um, not having anything to do with the actual moving noise texture on this face. So you can animate the noise texture separately 
from the actual splash in here. And so let's say that we wanted our splash to be changing size, right, or adjusting. So there's a few different things we could do in order to do that. So one thing, for example, is you could set the value of this add function to zero at zero. So we're just gonna keyframe this. And then let's say you wanted to have a different value at frame 250. So we'll just say this is gonna be like a 0 0.5, right? So we'll just right click and we'll just keyframe this again. And again, you could add some math functions in here as well, but we're just gonna leave this kind of as is for right now. And so notice how you're getting this little splash value in here um, that's kind of moving outward from these objects. And depending on how you keyframe that, you're gonna get different results. So let's say instead of like 0.5, let's say this had a value of 10. So if I right click, I'm gonna replace that keyframe. Now, if I play this, you can see how this is a much more pronounced effect. And so you can kind of play around with that and adjust that. Um, start playing around with some of these settings and kind of looking at the way that they create results in here. One other thing you could do is if you go back into your geometry nodes, so if we click over here and adjust this, you can set how far out these splashes are going to go as well. And so if I was to duplicate this, notice how I'm getting that splash effect inside all of these different objects. So that's from an in this video, another great example of geometry nodes. Make sure that you go check out late as usual on Twitter. And if you can support them with all the cool stuff that they're doing, those links will be in the notes down below. But I'd love to hear from you on some of the cool stuff you've seen with geometry nodes. I'd love to highlight more stuff like this and really kind of explore some of the cool things people are doing with geometry nodes inside of Blender. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click Click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.